quilting can sometimes be intimidating, but quilting just means that you are sewing multiple layers together. So in this case, we are going to take a piece of fabric of our choice that we want for our pumpkins, and it can be scrap fabric from other projects. And we're also going to take a piece of batting um, that I've used just scrap batting from uh, trim from my other quilts. And we're going to lay uh, the fabric on top of the batting. And I, you can sew or quilt this any way you would like. You can do little curly cues. You can practice your free motion quilting. But for this project, I th or this pumpkin, I think I'm going to just do some straight lines. And so what I like to do is this is a heat erase marker. And I'll link these below because I use these all the time. And what we're going to do is we're going to just draw a line on our fabric. And that is the first line. And it looks terrible, but it will all go away with heat when you press it. And then I usually use my 45 degree line on my on my ruler, line that up with that, and then just make another line all the way across. You can use 60 degrees, you can whatever use whatever degree you would like. And you can go ahead and mark the whole quilt top out, like if you would like to um, or I say quilt top, but pumpkin, you can say you want a line every two inches. You can just do that and keep going out with your markings and that makes it easy. And then when you just straight sew that, you'll have the lines already there. I like to use a little attachment on my sewing machine and I'll show you that when I go through and uh, show you how to quilt these or just really just sew them together. Um, and uh, that will be helpful too, but we'll go ahead and, and put this in the sewing machine and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so I have loaded matching thread into my machine and what we're going to do is just sew along the lines that we've made and we are going to quilt. So as you can see, I have this guide set up on my sewing machine and it is following this line that is next to it. These, this is two inches apart. You can pick whatever you would like as far as distance or how dense you would like the quilting or whatnot. The other thing you may notice is that I didn't pin this. Um, this is such a small piece of fabric that I don't really think that pinning it is super helpful. I mean, it may shift a little bit, but it's not going to be enough that you're going to, it's really going to bother you or be noticeable on the finished pumpkin. So I just go ahead and put them on top of each other. I do press it bef before I draw my lines on. That kind of helps it to kind of stick together a little bit more, for lack of a better word. But we'll go ahead and quilt this, and then we'll go back, and I will show you how to cut. So here I wanted to show you that you can mark your templates for your pumpkin before you quilt, or you can do it after you quilt, or you can just use the templates and cut around them and not mark the fabric at all. 
but I just wanted to show you uh, the, the quilted fabric um, completed as well as uh, putting the hot iron on this these quilt markings and it just disappears so don't be afraid to mark out your quilting if you want to and then just have it disappear so we are going to take this fabric quilted fabric now that we've got all the markings off of it and cut out the pieces for our pumpkin. I used white fabric for one pumpkin and then I went ahead and quilted some orange fabric and I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, but I just quilted this straight down just like you would see the ribs of a pumpkin. So when we put the pieces on there, you'll just kind of see those ribs going down so let's go ahead and cut out our template or cut out our pieces for our pumpkins using our templates in the pattern and you'll need six pieces per pumpkin. So here we have our six pieces of pumpkin cut out and I save my scraps. I just put those in the pumpkin and save myself some filling. Each template will tell you how far to turn over your pumpkin edge. So I just use my sewing ruler here and just set, set it at the measurement that I need and I just go from the edge down to the point and I use about half an inch um, and I will tack those little points down and do it on all of the pumpkins and then we'll be back. So you can be really neat and just tack that flap over with a small stitching or you can just run them through the machine by chain piecing and cut them apart after you are done. You're going to have a line and I did not put matching thread in which I should have um, but at least it'll be a little bit easier for you to see. So now we have our pieces. We've got our flaps sewn over. Now we're going to take two pieces of pumpkin and we are going to put them together and we are going to sew back stitching at the beginning and back stitching at the end to put two pieces together and then we're going to put another two pieces together. I found that if you put half of the pumpkin together and then put the two halves of the pumpkin together it actually is much easier to sew. So we will do that and then we will add the third piece and I'll show you how to do that. So we have our two pieces sewn together and we did not close, we did not sew close this little flap because we want that channel at the top uh, for later. So sew two pieces together and then we've got these two pieces sewn together. Now we are going to add a third piece to each one of these. So you're gonna sew this, and then we are going to sew this, and then we will have our two halves of the pumpkin put together. Here are the two halves, and we are going to take this half and flip it and we're going to put our two side, right sides together. And this time, instead of just sewing along one side, we're going to line this up. And I usually use clips for this part, or you can pin, or however you wanna line up your sides. But we are gonna sew all the way around 
all the way around to the other side to make the entire pumpkin. We have sewn all the way around the outside of the pumpkin and now we can flip this right sides out and just go ahead and check your seams because sometimes there, are, there will be one that's kind of peeking out a little bit of um, batting. I cannot think of that word. Um, but anyway, we've got all of our seams. They look pretty good. So these pumpkins, the littler ones, uh, well, any size really, sometimes it feels just a little bit better um, to have a little weight to these pumpkins. And I have put dried beans in the bottom of these pumpkins just to add a little bit of weight. And it tends to make the pumpkin sit a little bit better. But the other thing that I like to do is I like to put stuffing, but before I do that, and this will add a little bit of weight too, I just put all the scraps that we cut off. I don't want to waste them, and I just put them inside the pumpkin as well. And I will go get some polyfill, and we will finish stuffing this pumpkin. Okay, so we have our pumpkin stuffed, and I got a stick from outside. We live in the country, so we have a lot of availability of that, but you could use just a regular um, wooden dowel rod that's cut, or you can go to the park and get uh, some sticks that way. And then we just have some regular jute twine and a safety pin or a quilting pin. And I'm just going to take that, wrap it around the safety pin, and we're going to push, here, I'll take this out for a second. We're going to push the safety pin through the channels that we made when we folded over the end of the pumpkin pieces. We'll just go all the way around. The periphery of the pumpkin. You can use any kind of fabric for this project. I used pieces that I had left over from other quilting projects. I've used um, old tablecloths, fall tablecloths. You could use old bedspreads. I think chenille pumpkins are really cool. Uh, any kind of, what, whatever you want the quilt to be, or, or excuse me, the pumpkin to be, that's what you can do. There are no rules. So we are going to cut this twine. And then a, a good tip is when you cinch this pumpkin closed you want to cinch it around the stem but it's easier if you twist it a couple of times like that it holds the knot so that when you go to double knot it it will kind of hold a little bit better when you cinch it around it like that see how i don't have to hold that necessarily and it doesn't slip um so anyway that is how you do the knot, and then I always just double tie it or triple tie it. Makes it a little bit more secure. Now this pumpkin is still a little mushy. It doesn't have a ton of batting in it because it's kind of hard to put a lot of batting in it and then close the top. So another trick that you can do is take the stem out and just poke some more batting in there before we do anything else. And I like to just push it out and fill out that pumpkin like that. And then you can add the stem back in it. And then it just makes that pumpkin a little bit fuller, which I like the look of it a little bit fuller. 
So I put the stem back in the pumpkin. We've stuffed it a little bit fuller. I like to take and tie the, the twine around the stem. Whoops. I think it holds it in place so that when you pick up your pumpkin by your stem, it doesn't fall out or doesn't feel like it's not stable. And then I cut three pieces of twine and we're going to wrap these around the pumpkin too, just to give it a little bit more shape. Again, we're going to do uh, multiple passes on that knot. That'll make it stay a little bit easier. And don't worry about this looking a little bit messy right now because once we get our leaves on there, that is going to cover up all of the extra twine and it'll look nice. So the other thing that I want to mention about this is here are our seams for the pumpkin. And I think the twine looks best if you put it in between the seam, right down the middle of our pumpkin piece. It just lays a little bit more nicely and allows that seam to kind of pop out a little bit. Now these twine pieces, you do not have to have them long. I think they kind of look like just little vine tendrils off the pumpkin. But if you want to cut some of them off or make them shorter or however you want your pumpkin to look, you can do that too. So here is that piece. And then let's add another piece here on our remaining side. And this is the littlest pumpkin. So it's the vines are a little bit more congested at the top but as you get bigger and bigger size pumpkins it's it doesn't look quite as busy so here's the bottom of the pumpkin you can see again that we have our how we wrapped that and then we have the top of the pumpkin and i i'm gonna trim some of these i think because there it just seems like there's quite a bit there but you can trim them very short now that we've got knots on all of them and you're not really going to see that. And then once you get it trimmed how you would like it, you can add the leaves. Now this leaf, you can add one leaf, you can add two leaves, however you would like to do it. And that, you can see, it just it covers up all that... Um, busyness at the top and the little pumpkin you may want to trim the leaves just a smidge off and around them and the other thing I did with the leaves is I did a little zigzag stitch down the middle I think that makes it look a little bit cuter to have that um, as part of the leaf adds a little bit of detail and I didn't do it very I do do a very wide zigzag but you can certainly do a little bit wider zigzag and I just hot glue those on you could add a button on top of that um, on top of the leaves you could add any kind of uh, foliage to the top of the pumpkin and that is our finished pumpkin One last thing I forgot to mention, I like to use these little pumpkins as place tags for Thanksgiving. I think it really adds something to the Thanksgiving table. So I just take two of the little um, tendrils that we have. I add a, uh, a tag with a name on it. This sits at the top of everyone's plate at the table where everyone is going to sit and you can even give these away at the end of the night to your guests and they will appreciate these cute little pumpkins. Thank you so much for joining me for Quilted Pumpkins tutorial. If you like this tutorial I would love for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel or give me a thumbs up. 
I have some pumpkins here that I made and I just wanted to share some of the variety that you can make with this pattern. Because there are four sizes of pumpkin, you can do a topiary. Simply make the pumpkin just like we discussed and leave off the stem. And when you leave off the stem, you can stack your pumpkins into even a four tier uh, topiary um, pumpkin decoration, which is really fun. I made uh, orange pumpkin with some 1930s reproduction fabric that's really cute. I made some pink pumpkins. I made some floral pumpkins. Uh, here is the little place tag pumpkin that we did together. Here is our white pumpkin that we did the quilting on. Here is a big orange pumpkin. This is the largest size of pumpkin template. And I even did a wild leopard pumpkin for my mom. So you can get really creative and have a lot of fun with this project and send me an email, send me an Instagram post. Let me know what you're doing with these pumpkins and I hope you have fun.